Everybody. Are we so excited? I got on a little early to make my coffee, so when she gets on at 8.30, we'll be ready to go. It's very exciting. Hope everyone has their questions ready to go. Do you want a shot, like a double shot, or do you want a whole other cup? Okay. Yeah, no, no, I was just checking before I did it. Yay! Hello, hello! I sent out alerts, but if you know someone's usually here and you don't see them, feel free to share the live with them so they get to come to all the fun. Yes! It is exciting! It's a special day. everyone making their coffee. No worries, Becca, we've got time and you'll still be able to hear it, which is nice. Eh, why can't I open this? Hey, Avery. Hey, Naisa. Hello, everybody. Beetlejuice cup is right. It's my favorite cup. Yes, thank you, Liz, for sharing it with any friends who won't want to miss this. We have anyone see me to Oh, yes, Def. Oh, you did. That's amazing. On your congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, Karen. Hello, hello. We are so, so, so excited for this morning because we have the author of our last book coming on to talk to us, which I think is something so cool for a book club. We haven't had an author come talk to us since John. Um, so that is super exciting, at least I think so anyway, and I'm just making coffee while we wait, like you do, you know, easy peasy. Have you ever had those mini kiwi berries? I don't know if I've ever had a kiwi berry, but it sounds nice. It sounds familiar. Maybe I have. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Rosie. How you doing? Beetlejuice, you have a stitched coffee cup? Very nice, very nice. We love to see that. Today's the day, that's right. Special Q&A with author... Oh, it's running out of water. Sheesh. Ah. Come on. Oops. I did that poorly. Oops. Did that poorly. Eh, I'm gonna have to do some fancy footwork here. What a chaotic thing to enter to. Yes, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, hey Roxy, hey Liv. Um, share with all your friends who love the book so that they get to talk to the author today. I know it technically isn't the start time yet, and I'm sure TikTok will alert everyone once it gets to the actual start time. Hey, yes, Lindsay's here as well, and um, Mallory will be here shortly, and we will add her to the live, of course. I hope everyone has their questions ready to go. Um, 
I have a couple of friends who have actually already read her book and they were so sad that they couldn't make it because they are on the East Coast and they're at work, but we are recording this for them. You met her at RomanceCon last month. She is so cool. I met her at the, um, at the LA Times Book Festival. That's how I even heard of the book. She and I were in line for a, a panel together and, um, and, and that's what uh, made me pick up the book. She was talking about, about her book. She and one other new author were talking about their work. And I was like, oh, well, I'll pre-order them just to like be supportive. And then I, I thought it was really funny. And then we needed a new book right at the same time as her book was coming out. And so I was like, I pitched it to the book club and I was like, hey, do you guys think this is interesting? And we ended up loving it. So um, we'll tell her that. She doesn't know any of that um, yet, but we'll tell her that when she comes, you know, so that she knows the whole the whole story of how we ended up reading her book for book club. Um, I mean, she knows that we met there, obviously. We, we became mutuals at that time, but she doesn't know the whole, like, book club story, if you will. So, that's fun. Yes, work schmark. Um, unfortunately, the, one of the friends that I'm thinking of, she, sp she particularly works at a school, so she can't just, like, dip out, you know, unfortunately. But... She did read the book and she did love it. It was uh, one of her favorite books last month. Morning, Claire. Morning, Julia. Thank you for sharing the live, everyone. I bet she's going to be thrilled to see everyone here. The author who we're talking to today will be here shortly. So share it with all your friends. And let's make sure that we show her some love when she gets here. I have some questions, but I hope you all do as well. Oh, I think she might be here. I think I just saw an entry from Mallory. Hold on one second. I think, I think. Let me try to add her really quickly. One second. Hey, Good Neighbor Books, I just added you because I thought you might be interested since we have a um, special guest today. Let me see if I can get Mallory. Hold on. No, that's not how it works. Hold on, I have to request it. Let's see, I need to get her as a guest. One second, friends. I'm going to add her so we can talk to her. If you're hearing noise, it's my coffee maker. It'll be done in a second. Maybe I don't see her on the list. Am I? Mallory, if you're in here, can you request to join the live? Because I'm having trouble finding you on the list. I thought I saw her ad. I saw someone fly by named Mallory, and I'm assuming that's her. Although it's a lovely name. So if you're in here and you're not her and you just happen to be named Mallory, we love that also. Um, or even Mallory, if you just comment, I'll be able to see your name and click on it. Morning, Ray. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me see. How can I add her? Do, 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 do. Maybe, I, oh, there she is. I see it. I got you, Mallory. Whoop, it worked. I found her. Yes, you are here. I found you. There she is. Hello, hello, hello. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to turn my camera no on. No stress. We're so excited to have you here today. We have been so in love with your book. I can't wait for everyone <laughs> to get to ask their questions. Oh, thank you so much. I do not know why my camera won't show. Well, take your time and set that up. I'll just read you some of the things that are happening in the comments while you're figuring that out. We actually have um, the owner of an independent bookstore is here watching this oh, live awesome. while working on their receiving. We have another friend of mine who is another book talker here who does those blind date with a book boxes. She read your book recently oh, and our yay. entire regular book club, of course, is super excited. I was just mentioning this right before you came in. So while you're figuring out, I'll tell you how our book club came yeah. to read your book so that you kind of have the backstory. I don't know if you remember, but you and I met in line for a panel at yes. the LA Book Festival. And I pre-ordered your book and Danica's right away because I just like <laughs> to support other authors. And so I was like, sure, yeah. no problem. But that was months before they were going to come out, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's whatever. And then it popped up in my Kindle when it came out. And I was like, oh, cool. And we read a new book all the time. And yeah. I usually let the book club vote on books and it popped up into my kindle right as we had finished our last book and i was like hey oh, <laughs> just so you all know i have this idea and so i read the blurb and everyone was like yes do it and i'll tell you what Ray, <laughs> one of our members her name is yeah. Ray, just said she just said your dialogue between the characters is amazing and that's what oh, we said every you. week as we were talking about it it was just 
We fell so in love with them. Um, we love your characters. We do have questions both about yeah. the and the writing, um, but we just wanted to make sure you knew that we're we're such fans of your work. We fell right in love with them, your style, <laughs> dialogue, everything. Um, we read Thank it so you. fast. I can't even tell you. I want to say, I can't think of it. I think we read the book in two weeks, which is short <laughs> for us. Yeah. <laughs> For so sure. Neighbor Bookstore just added it to their next order list just from oh, their, their the bookstore. Love that. Bookstore. So, yeah, more mm -hmm. um, more more stuff is going on there, which is exciting. Yeah. Do you want to tell um, Anya said top notch sense of humor? By the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far, do you want to tell as far as, about um, yourself? Yeah, for sure. So um, for the video, it looks like I might need access for that. I don't know oh, if that's something that you can do. Yeah, it might be. See. I'm, um, I'm very not tech savvy. <laughs> it says, can't turn the camera on because author Mallory Marlowe doesn't have access to join. Oh, you know what? I might need to have you join as a different kind of get. Um, hold on. Let me give me one second. Try. I'm going to disconnect you and reconnect you. Not because I don't love good. you. Because I think I have an idea. Hold on two seconds. Sounds good. Okay, guys, we're working on this. We will get her on here. Don't you stress. I think I know what I need to do. No, maybe, maybe that'll work. I tried. Let's see if that works. Mm? Oh, no, it's still not letting me do a camera. Ah, oh, beans. I don't know why. Um, sometimes if I do the, oh, gosh, what? there's another way that you can add people. Um, if anyone remembers because, oh, is it a follower count thing? Someone's asking if that's it. I don't know, that might be. But usually if you can have oh, audio, you can have video. Yeah, that's very it's odd. So weird. I'm so sorry about that. I didn't that's know okay. that. <laughs> that is all well, good. <laughs> while I'm doing a little bit of, I'm going to do some clicking around while you yeah. tell everyone about yourself. Because I think there is one other way that I've seen before. Um, so you talk and I'll, I'll yeah. click around. Yeah, for sure. Um, so thank you guys so much for having me. Um, sorry you can't see me. Um, <laughs> but, He's um, lovely, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Mallory. I am the author of Love and Other Conspiracies. Um, I'm really appreciative that you guys read the book um, and seem to love it so much. That is just awesome. Uh, I love the idea that book clubs are picking it up. That's so exciting. Um, I currently live in Los Angeles, uh, and I, um, I work in video games. Um, so that is what I do for a day job. That is yeah. so fun. Yeah. Um, what a cool job. My sister's husband, like almost all his friends work in video games. Actually, most of them work at Blizzard, oh, really? which is so funny. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is, that is, uh, okay. So my, my, whatever I decided to do did not, did not do a thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I've been clicking things around. Um, <laughs> just so you know, I, I'm not sure yeah. if I told you this before. Our book club has actually been doing this um, six days a week for almost two years now. Oh my God. That's yeah, so crazy. We're, we're a very long term, <laughs> strong book club. We meet every morning at this time, except Sundays. I take Sundays off. Um, so, Lindsay, who does the blind date with a book box, has said, yeah. Love the book so much. The audiobook was incredible. Naisa said, I genuinely laughed out loud. The book was so good. <laughs> so everyone just absolutely adored it. But people, People in the comments, if I know that people have been saving their questions because we read it last month. So anyone who has their questions that they've been dying to ask, um, I'm going to start with one that we have been thinking about. All of us have been wondering <laughs> this since literally the first page. How do you pronounce her name? Is it Haley or Hallie? We have to know. Hallie. It's okay, Hallie. I was right. Yeah. Yes, score. <laughs> I won this one. Okay. Because I was reading the description and they were like, Sasha, I think it's Haley. And I was like, I think it's Hallie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's Hallie. <laughs> okay, but that was I mean, really important to my soul. I needed this one. Um, I, so, as, as somebody with another frequently mispronounced name, um, wait, I assume. What do you mean? She, Who pronounces your name wrong, dude? I respond to every single M name. On, like, if I'm like at a coffee shop and they call out my name, I'll just respond to most things with an M because I'm like, yeah, that's probably me because <laughs> nobody is getting it right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> like Mallory, Melanie, Valerie, Melissa. I'm like, yeah, that's really my order. Sure. If, if that's what I ordered, that's probably me. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> so I'm going to start with um, Jack's question here. And Jack yeah. has asked this a few different times to the rest of us. Yeah. The most important question of the day, she says, is, do you know a guy like Hayden in real life? And can <laughs> she have his number? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I wish I did. Um, and if I did, I don't know how... Uh, I, I might not want to share, share that. Yeah, you yeah. probably wouldn't want to share it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I mean, he's like, he's 
he's a dream. You know, I think that as writers, you always kind of write a little bit of a wish fulfillment in a way um, of, course. of like just the kind of person that you want to end up with. <laughs> I, I completely agree. Um, so just so you know, a bunch of the people in the comments are following you right now. So hopefully you, oh, okay. it's, <laughs> if it's a follower account thing, they're trying to, yeah. to, to, to do I, it. Um, I, I do not use TikTok very often. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, told yeah. Them, I think most of us actually follow you on Instagram right now because when yeah. you first asked you that and you said you don't use it everyone was like okay we'll we'll go over there and follow you there yeah. but this is just a better platform for lives and this is where we do it so that's the only reason yeah, we're doing for this. sure for sure um, so naisa's <laughs> question is what conspiracies do you actually believe or are you like <laughs> hallie and are you a skeptic oh i'm totally like hayden i'm i'm a big believer um oh, i feel oh, like i i i believe in a lot i feel like i i'm like him in that i really like prospect of like things we don't know and um so like one of the ones i really am a big believer in is i think there's all kinds of alien stuff that the sure. government knows that they're not telling us i love a good alien conspiracy i think that they're just really fun because also like other conspiracies that might not seem like they are um like connected to aliens sometimes have that tie so it's like sure. they just they go everywhere um, but I'm also like, I do love a good JFK assassination theory too, because sure. I feel like sure. they're like, it's so wild how much we don't know about that. And I would love to like one day know. I don't, I don't know if we ever, <laughs> but I would love to really know what happened. That's one of those weird ones that I hear a lot of perspectives on. Cause okay. So my mom is older. My mom was in high school yeah. when he was assassinated and yeah. she remembers like the phone calls that happened right after. So she's always talking about it. So that's what yeah. I actually hear about regularly. Cause she's in on that one. Yeah. Um, Jen wants to know if you believe in Bigfoot. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I just feel like there is so much, like, especially like in the Pacific Northwest and like Northern California, sure. there's just so many trees, like there's no way we can search all of them. I'm sure yeah. he's out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the other thing that I always say, and I don't know how you all feel. Well, I know how our book club feels about this because we talk about it all the time, but I don't know how <laughs> any of the people who are here who are not usually in book club because we had, I did have people pop in specifically for you. Um, yeah. um, and we do have, I want to tell you, there are so many people who couldn't make it today because of work that are watching. <laughs> oh. the, they submitted questions with me because they were so sad, especially I have a friend who she works in New York at a college and she was like, I'm so upset because she loved your book so much oh. last month. <laughs> um, so just so you know, there are people who were really, really sad. Um, oh, that makes me so happy. Yeah, I mean, not that they it. couldn't make it, but. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why we record stuff, right? That's the yeah, whole point of having it. Totally. But I have this whole thing um, about like, like unicorns specifically, whenever people yeah. are like, Sasha, do you really believe in unicorns? I'm like, well, why is the idea of a horse with a horn weirder than a giraffe? Like, come yeah. on, guys. Like, I, you know? I was like watching something, the a video on YouTube the other day where they were talking about how like 150 years ago, like gorillas were like, a cryptid because yeah. they hadn't seen them they had right. seen like other monkeys and stuff but they didn't know that that was like they, they didn't know that there were these huge apes that were like down in africa so it, it's like i don't think it's completely unreasonable to think that there are species that we don't know about now like we don't know everything like <laughs> but we like to think we do but we don't <laughs> it's so arrogant for us to think we know everything but then the other thing is any of these things of which there are many mentioned in your book yeah. and otherwise that crop up in multiple different cultures you have yeah. to go a little huh right because, yeah like, otherwise <laughs> what's happening like if it was from a time before there was like online communication yeah. like, you're like i don't know bro i don't know yeah like, why does For everyone sure. have lore why <laughs> you know I mean? like, oh, oh, it's a little sus um yeah. so ray wants to know do you personally have any interest in supernatural stuff and if so many how many of the locations have you visited Ooh, yeah um so that i i am very interested in the supernatural and that was really like where the inspiration for this came from was like i grew up watching all the ghost hunting shows and like the travel channel um like i, I like the haunted america's most haunted destinations or something they would always run those specials yeah. and so i watched all of those as a kid so i was just always really fascinated by it um but as far as places i've been from the book i've been to the queen mary i've stayed sure. overnight there and did like the ghost tour and stuff the way that you described it, the book is that legit yeah um yeah. i mean i don't 
don't think you can stay in that haunted room anymore. Yeah. That was a liberty I took. Yeah. Um, I think that you could probably rent it out if you're like a big wig Obviously. and like you're, you know, you have a show or something, but um, you can't do it like just as me, a person. Um, well, let's make sure that your book gets on the top of the New York I know. Post, and then if you get on like Reese Witherspoon's show or something, then you'll yeah. get it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Then, the, then they'll let me in the haunted room. Um, uh, and then I've been to like the parts of like Hollywood that were haunted because um, I live like right in LA. So, mm -hmm. Roosevelt Hotel, um, just like the haunted, you know, strip up on the Hollywood Boulevard. I've been to the Hollywood sign. I've driven past like where the Manson murders happened, but obviously, like as we know from the book, the house is not there anymore. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I I try to visit as many like spooky places in the area as I can. Um, oh, I would love to write off right now. It, so. it is, yeah. I I really want to take like the book on a ghost tour in LA, like take a copy oh of it with God, me and do it. Wait, yeah. So cute. You should literally do that. That would be so much fun. I know. That's yeah. Really cool. I, I got it. I still got to do it. I, I mean, spooky season is a great time, but I'm in the middle of a move right now. So <laughs> yeah, I got That's enough really going on. <laughs> um, so Naisa wants to know who your dream cast would be if this was made either into a TV show or a movie. And my question is, is it different if it's a TV show or movie because different people do those things? I don't know. Yeah, I I feel like it wouldn't be different if it were a movie or a TV show. I feel like I kind of have the same people in mind. Um, for Hallie, I really like Haley Lou Richardson, who is in The White Lotus. She played um, uh, Jennifer Coolidge's assistant. What I think that she, show? yeah, I think that she just has like such a funky look to her. And I feel like that's really like, it, it was really Hallie when I was watching it. I was like, oh, she just really gives it the vibe and has kind of yeah. like a very, um dry sense of humor and so i feel like that would lend itself very well to hallie's delivery yeah. um and then i think as far as hating goes he doesn't physically look exactly as i imagine but i feel like jack quaid has the right vibe um from? i don't think i know him um he was in the boys on um oh. it's on prime i think oh. and then he was in the new scream movie um and he's um meg ryan and dennis quaid's son so he's well, like he's like rom-com yeah. royalty yeah not deal at all, right? um, yeah he's just he's kind of very like he has a very like normal guy hotness to him and yeah. like kind of nerdy and dorky so like i feel like he fits that vibe really well um everyone is loving your choices i have to say no, this didn't come to my mind until last night and not looks wise but just vibe wise last night i was like oh my god adam brody if he was younger yeah <laughs> totally like, oh, right i i feel one. like a, one of like the unintentional like influences that i had for hayden was um riley from national treasure <gasps> like obsessed yeah yes percent. Yeah. oh my gosh i was like that that i didn't realize i had like written that in but like that childhood crush definitely came through <laughs> oh come on right were we i mean if you if you're writing this kind of book i, I was obsessed with that movie too so i can oh, totally yeah. see how that would go um jack wants oh, to know yeah. if you've ever been to savannah because apparently there's a ton of haunted stuff there Ooh. i know it's so haunted i've never been i i really want to go my brother has been a couple times and he loves it so oh, I, I definitely plan to go visit Savannah at some point. The only haunted tour I've ever been on was the one in Boston. I was there oh, yeah. for, um, for uh, 4th of July one year, and we did like a, like a midnight haunted trolley tour. Yeah. They're so I, real. Well, because, I mean, there's so much history there. You know yeah. some stuff went down. Yeah. Um, I went Boston. to school in Boston, so I, I think oh, I, I did that one, one too, the haunted yeah. trolley. Oh, yeah. Hmm. We were we were young and we thought it was the funniest thing ever. Um, Roxy oh, was yeah. just asking Riley, who Riley, just so you know, Roxy, Riley is the supporting lead character, um, like the comedic relief guy in National Treasure with Nicolas Cage. If you guys have never seen that movie, <laughs> it's cheesy AF, but like top notch. It's like so good. You want out of a perfect like uh situational like faux historical really just treasure hunt yeah treasure hunt movie um and it's also kid friendly i know oh just so mallory doesn't know this but everyone else knows that most of the women in our book club or i would say at least 50 or 60 percent have um kids who are between the ages of five and 12. so it's a totally kid friendly oh, book yeah or movie you can watch it with them um, oh yeah that as well um 
Okay, so Naisa says, I know you're writing more books, but would you ever write more about Hallie and Hayden? We all have been wondering this. <laughs> I I love them. I mean, I would love to do like newsletter content or little bonus scenes. Yeah. I think that like what's tough with romance is that if you were to write a sequel, I think you kind of have to bring friction into the relationship. And that's always hard to like, I don't know. I'm always like, I don't want to like break them up or cause yeah. them strife. I feel like they got their happily ever after. Um, but I do have plans for them to show up in future books. So that was we will see. Yeah, yeah. I, I can confirm that we will see them again. Um, not in book two, but in the future, we will see them again. Is book two, like, is it, is it sort of, you know, those romance series that like take uh, yeah. supporting characters and make them the lead characters of the next one? Cause that would allow you not to have to, there's no friction for them then cause they're not the lead yeah. characters in the background. Is your for second sure. book that, or is it a completely new universe? It is in the same universe, um, <laughs> it, but they are characters that we haven't really met yet. Um, <laughs> Are you going to do anything with our current supporting leads who we also fell in love with? I mean, come on. Nora I mean, just... and Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> like, we love um, They're so cute. He's, he loves her so much. I know. <laughs> um, I did have plans for a book for them. Um, it just kind of didn't come to fruition the way that I wanted it to. Oh, that's fair. Um, so I, I will always have them in my back pocket as like, I, I would love to write their love story one day um, because I think we all know that it's like a thing. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But um, I would love to one day. I just haven't found the right form yet. And so I sometimes I just have to rejigger them a little bit. No, of course. What I loved about it was that she's kind of just like, you know, oblivious to it. And he's just right there, just waiting. Yeah. For but like in a totally non-toxic, not creepo way, like yeah. plus for him. Um, he's, he's just a bit of a simp. Like he just loves yeah. her. <laughs> That's, you know what? It's fine. We'll take yeah. it. Um, so Anya's question is, did you have a goal in mind when you were writing this book? For example, acceptance of some of your favorite conspiracy theories. That's a great question. Oh, I don't think I, I mean, I think the goal that I had in mind was to write a romance that was set in this paranormal world. I think that that was really like the biggest goal that I had. Um, but as I like revised and it went through a mentorship program, um, I really wanted to utilize like Hallie's belief in the paranormal and the otherworldly as like a vector for her learning to believe in herself again. Yes. Um, so I think that that was probably like, the biggest goal and like the biggest like narrative accomplishment that I was really setting out to do as I got further into writing it. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, we were with her from moment one, so it didn't take <laughs> much on our part, but I could see how, how you would want people to like get there with her, you know, if they yeah. were more of a slow burn. Um, so Lindsay wants to know, will you be at <laughs> RomanceCon 2025? She met you, I believe she said she met you this oh, year. Oh yeah. At 2024, um, just wants to know if you're going to be at 2025. Uh, yeah. So I, they haven't announced it yet, but I, I will be. That is all the right. Well, that's <laughs> and wait, where does that take place? I know you traveled to that this year. I don't know where Milwaukee. that. Milwaukee. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, we can all just drop it and go to Milwaukee whenever. Yeah. Right? That's totally yeah. I, I had never been before. I really liked it. I mean, yeah. it was also like that weekend in LA. It was like 112 degrees. So yeah. then, like. Bye. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> um, and it was like, I, I had to like put sweatshirts on to go get coffee in the morning and it was cold. And I was like, oh yeah, other places get fall. <laughs> we don't in California, but other places get fall. <laughs> it's true. I have heard that. I have heard that about other places. Yeah. Um, it's sitting in, in this, this bastion of sunlight coming oh through my God, it's obviously so cold. hot. <laughs> um, yeah, this week, for anyone who doesn't know, Mallory and I live not too far from one another in the grand yeah. scheme of things, and we are going through a heat wave this week. It's a bit, it's a bit toasty here this week. Um, so yeah, we're, we're getting back up into the eighties, which is a oh. little, a little sus for October. So, you yeah. know, if you, uh, can support you know, earth environmental causes, do that, you know, not <laughs> right. to off topic, but we're not going to be able to search for Bigfoot very longer if we don't have a planet. So there's yeah. that. Um, yeah. So yes, we have a lot of votes here for bonus material. Is okay. there a website that you would like everyone to like sign up for a newsletter? Because we would all love to support those and like catch up with our favorite characters if that does come to fruition. Yeah. 
we would just read them when it came out, obviously. Yeah, for sure. I, I have a newsletter. Um, I haven't, I really would like to start looking into like releasing bonus material. I have an idea of what I might do. It might be a while until I can post sure. it. Um, but yeah, if you um, go to my link tree um, in, I have it on my Twitter, on my Instagram um, and on Instagram, I am at Mallory Marlowe writes. Um, I have a newsletter sign up there and I mostly will send out like, unsolved mysteries or little deep dives into like oddities and whatnot so that tends to be most of like the content that i post but i do definitely want to get bonus content out there eventually um and ray said just so you know not a question just an fyi yeah. but her tiny local library has multiple copies of the book and they are currently all checked out so that's oh my god great. that's awesome that's yes. so awesome <laughs> Um, so my question is, and I don't know how much of this you're allowed to say, because I know yeah. there's legalities when you have a, a traditional yeah. publisher. So feel free to skirt around my question, however you need yeah. to, but what's our timeline looking like for book two? Uh, that'll be next summer. So I'm on a pretty consistent summer release schedule. Um, so okay. yeah, we haven't like announced the date yet. Uh, we have a cover. Um, I am very eager to share it. It is gorgeous. What is that going to happen? um probably in november okay, um, we'll that would be my guess yeah we still got because they tend to like to um do cover reveals when pre-order links populate which is typically about nine months ahead of release so oh, that would be my guess we haven't started talking about it yet um but yeah i'm very excited to share that one and just very excited about that book as a whole because it's absolutely it's wacky <laughs> i mean we're all in we usually um you know, when, once we find an author that we like, I will tell you pretty, pretty firmly, we, we go hard and we will read everything <laughs> by said author. Like, oh, I love that. Kind of we've always gone. Like, we actually just started a book this week and we already fell in love with it. And we we're like, okay, she already has three in this series and we just got yeah. all of them. We're like, we're, just yeah. gonna, oh, we're, we're doing next. that next. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you find someone whose voice you vibe with, you're like, let's yeah. just do all of it. Right. Oh, um, yeah. So that's uh, just so you know, you will have at least at, at the bare minimum, you will have at least our group um, right Yay. off. <laughs> because that is that is something we do very frequently here. Um, everyone is saying they're very excited for, for book two of the comments. I'm not sure. The reason I keep reading them is because I don't know what you can see. Um, yeah. It's always different. Like when sometimes you only see like the things on your side or whatever. I'm not sure how that works actually. Yeah, with, I, um, I can see some of them, but I, I'm a slow reader here. No, no worries. <laughs> so, oh, it cool. helps. So um, I think Jack, uh, I'll let, I'll, I'll let, I think you, you like half answer this, but Jack is, is multitasking because she's got littles. Yes. So this is kind of like yes. a half repeat question, which is, yeah. will we recognize the main characters of the next book? Mm, no. You said um, the same universe though, right? Yes. I would say um, the love interest for book two does get a mention in the first out there episode that we see um oh. i can't oh. i feel like I'm, I'm i'm like holding a lot of cards here oh, no, I'm, just, like, so like, I'm like i don't want to give them all away oh, but no. there is a mention of who that is and you'll find out very quickly in book two who he is that's exciting <laughs> yeah it, um, it, it's fun it's fun to like weave the characters together and especially like with like future books and stuff like hayden is such a wacky character that it's really fun to like just put him in these weird circumstances where he encounters these people. Yeah. But he's just so sweet. I mean, we just loved him so much. We were yeah. just so straight oh. up at that point. <laughs> um, but also, like, the parts when he was with his mom and his stepdad, there were moments where we were just like, <gasps> don't hurt him! Yeah. <laughs> in oh, earlier versions, they were so much worse. I'm really glad that I, like, pulled them back. <laughs> That was a really interesting thing that we all because like okay so just just formatic wise so that you know we usually yeah. do reading and then we have discussion which i think is obviously yeah. normal for a book club but like not every book club's exactly ours is pretty like free form because we're yeah. i don't know whatever we are um but we we do tend to um we have like what we call our like little morning therapy sessions whenever <laughs> up in a book that is something a lot of us have done with you know what I mean yeah. and I think that's part of the beauty of art right is that you yeah bring up something that we all either relate to or recognize or whatever you want to call it right yeah um, and yeah nice is saying no seriously we were like don't hurt our sweet baby <laughs> we were, it's true. but also we really thought yeah and Ray is Ray is adding a, a footnote 
it's because we're all a little neuro spicy. So we, we use this same. as a, you, know, <laughs> you know, whatever, um, which I think is fine. I think that the, the more healthy places you can find for connection is, yes. wonderful, right? So um, I, I, I love that. But we did note among the mom and the stepdad um, how it was a little bit healing, right? That like yeah. there were these really tense moments initially, which I think we can all relate to and we've all experienced one way or another, regardless of what your relationship with your parents yeah. are, right? But then it turns out that they actually were quite supportive. They just didn't know how to express themselves, which is yeah. also super relatable, especially if you have boomer parents, you're like, holy right. <laughs> for the love Yeah, of the and I think it's like, you know, we we see a lot of bad parents in books and i mm -hmm. mean i think there's reason um and also i mean just on like a craft level like it really is easy to give your characters these like wounds that they need to overcome from mm -hmm. their families and stuff yeah. um but i mean i think that like so much of it with hayden's family is like your parents just want the best for you but sometimes they don't understand that the ways that they're trying to encourage that are hurting you so I was like, I think it would be better for him, especially with all that he's gone through, to ha ha so that he feels like he does have like okay. a parent that he can okay. lean on. Because I feel yes. like he's kind of lonely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so knowing that he does have family, then he doesn't have to be an island and be totally alone. Our boy needs that. <laughs> like yeah, hardcore. Also, I, what I loved about that particular thing is that so often in books like this, what you mentioned is so true, um, mm -hmm. but one of the things we see in other books, whether they be romance or not, often is that, well, I guess, especially romance to the point that I'm very slowly getting towards, unfortunately, because brains. Um, <laughs> I, I have baby brains so bad. She steals yeah. all of my brains. Like, right <laughs> Um, but what I was going to say was that, like, usually we we find that the person is an island and the other romantic interest is the only way that they can ever find any connection in the world. Yeah. So that's not really a healthy or realistic life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You do need friends. You do need family. You cannot only exist within this bubble of just you and the other. You can in that, like, little cute honeymoon here, but you need, yeah. <laughs> you need the rest of a fulfilled life Long as well. term. Right. And so I think it was really lovely to see a more full, confused, but supportive family. I think yeah. what it really spoke to, and I'm sure you feel this a, at least a little bit, um, being that you work in video games, is mm -hmm. this very, it's, it's an extremely millennial experience of being this generation that has to explain a very different career path to yeah. previous generations. Because yeah. like, okay, being an author, <laughs> even though it looks different now than it did a hundred years ago, everyone, when you say I'm an author, everyone knows what that means to an extent, yeah. right? Like not detail, totally. right? like high level. Okay, we get it, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> parents, I'm going to go work in video games. They're like, you know, yeah. uh, you know? Yeah. Um, and and I, I think like, especially like with what um, Hayden and Hallie do, where they're yes. like online, it's like, I think that a lot of people from older generations don't know that you really can actually make a living. Like, honestly, you could probably make a lot more money being an influencer than you can, like, in an right. office job. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely something, like, I, I, I've i talked to the the book club about it frequently, but when, when I, I, I'm married now, but before I was married, I... I never told people on dates what I did for a living because yeah. I didn't want to have to explain it for yeah. that reason because people think you're a joke and they don't believe what you do. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I was like, well, I own a small business and I make stuff. I happen to also make videos because that's how you promote your work. But like, you know, and, and like it became such a chore to even explain to people what was going on. So I could see when they were doing that, I felt it so viscerally. I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> I was For like, sure. it just it burned into my soul. And I was like, you guys, I want to rip my skin off my face, you know? <laughs> because it was so real. So you, I knew yeah. you had felt that. Um, I'm going to scroll a little because we did have questions. Yeah. This was like, so Ray said, how long did it take you to break into traditional publishing? And did this book get revamped a lot from your original vision before making it to shelves? Great question. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's kind of weird because I've been writing books since I was like 14 and I'm 29 now. So I, um, I've been writing for like half my life. Um, and I, I mean, even as a kid, like before I was writing books, I, I knew I wanted to do something right. Yeah. Oh, like always. Um, 
Did you go to but, school for writing or you just did it on your yeah. own? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I went to school for screenwriting, um, oh. which is a little different, um, yeah. but I knew like I wanted to have one foot in the entertainment industry. So that was like a good marrying of my interests. Um, yeah. But I, I, for so long, I was just writing for myself. Like I think like when I was in high school, I was writing for me. And then I wanted to publish, but I, you know, when you're 17, you don't really know what you're doing. I did query a book when I was 17. And That's adorable. Uh, Wait, what was it about? I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, but we dear God. Um, it was like, it, this was, I think, like, what, 2011, 2012, maybe? Um, so it was a dystopia. Um, of course. Because that know. was of the era, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, um, it was about, like, these like people with superpowers and like oh. yeah it was like it was like a post like there was like a nuclear war and then the nuclear war gave people superpowers and then it was like kind of a romance as well it was it was a bit of a hot mess um but, so but you just gotta exactly yeah so like then i just kind of didn't really do anything with my books because i was just doing it for me so then it wasn't until like 2020 ish that i was like you know maybe i could try to do something with this and i wrote another book that i didn't end up pursuing um and then i wrote what would become love and other conspiracies and it was super different like so different um it was set in boston hallie was a video game designer um who had like the reason she ended up on the show is because she gets laid off um so as as happens in video games very very often sadly yes. um so it was just a really different story. And then it took a couple of different attempts to find how it had to grow. And I think that I was trying to just keep it as a podcast for too long, but really it had to grow into being a web series. So like they needed to almost like open up their canvas a little bit. And that came to me in like early 2022. Nice. So, so not, wrote not it too long in the grand scheme. Yeah. Yeah. So it's since like the version of it that is somewhat recognizable <laughs> um to what we have now it, it's been like two and a half years yeah that's pretty yeah. Cool. Well, so did you have a completely different working title <laughs> yes i queried it um and wrote it as hayden and hallie's false flag operation oh that's cute yeah and but then my, love and other conspiracies can't be beat really yeah oh. um and then like my agent and my um i because like when i had a couple of agent offers and a bunch of them were like need to change this title um and they and they were right they were like it sounds very militaristic i think that you can get something that's more oh. romancy and that's very true <laughs> very you know true i think the only reason i didn't think of that immediately is because i've already read the book so i knew what you were yeah. trying to say but if i had it you might be right that or they might be right rather that that is where our brain yeah. would go that's For very sure easy. I mean, that's why we yeah. have those people, right? Everyone's I know. and they, they, they doing the Lord's work out there. I know. And I, I hate coming up with titles. That is like one of my least favorite parts of writing a book. So like when one comes to me, I'm like, we're keeping it. We're not that's letting so go of it. <laughs> that is the first thing that came to me for, for my book. And I never changed it because it always made sense. And that's the only <laughs> thing that didn't change. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Lindsay said that um, she loves how Hayden and Hallie took care of each other in the ways that they hadn't been cared for previously. Yeah. I think a lot of us felt that way. It's like one of those really like, quote unquote, being seen for the first time feelings is where you recognize, yeah. uh, like uh, you recognize the thing that your soul is like looking for essentially, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, it's, it's one of my favorite things about the two of them. That's for sure. Jack said, this is very funny. And I think that Hayden probably feels a little bit like what Jack is saying here. She said, I want to be an influencer, but like only in theory, I don't want to have their energy. I just want their money. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's like, so like, I mean, don't look at me. Just let me tell you about my theories. <laughs> the, the heroine in uh, book two, Love at First Sighting, is an influencer. So I dive a lot into influencer culture and i had so much fun writing that um that's, really, that's a very heavy theme in my second book as well yeah <laughs> except that mine takes place in a completely different time period so it's wackadoodle but yeah um, but it, i had to do a lot of research even though like i live in the world enough to kind of like yeah. have sort of an understanding of it but it was funny to do research on like the origins of you know yeah so you did a little bit of it in that as well i was like looking into like the very beginnings of like the mommy blog 
bloggers and like how it really yeah, right. was like, wow dang boy that is that is what a, i'm so glad i wasn't there <laughs> yeah i mean but at the same time i was like doing re like trying to figure out like how much money does she really make like how rich right. is she yes. um and um i was like huh wow that's a lot of money that sounds pretty lit actually um <laughs> but like i'm not nearly cute enough or like you know photogenic enough to like you know be an influencer and also like i just it doesn't suit me but i was like man they make some bank <laughs> they, they really do they they it, it's it's almost sometimes when i hear some of the the numbers that people are getting oh, like, when i'm, I'm in a couple of random group chats where people are like oh how much did this company offer you whatever like that and sometimes i hear the numbers and i'm like what? I, I'm yeah. Not, like my jaw, I just like, I'm like, I'm not even going to respond to this because I can't even, I don't have anything to offer you people in this yeah. conversation. Um, Anya wants to know, and she's saying it in a little bit of jest, but kind of <laughs> not, right? She said, I need to know why did you wait so long for them to kiss because it was killing me. And I think we all <laughs> had to our seat, but that was kind of the beauty of it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's always, the, that's always like when you know you've done a pretty decent job is when people are like, Oh man, I just wanted them to kiss or, you know, you know, when you're reading, you're like, crap, I just want them to make out. Um, I think that part of the reason was because Hallie had so much to overcome. Like she wasn't, um, she wasn't really comfortable giving her heart away. And so I think that like kissing, going in for a kiss would kind of be like leading him on when maybe she wasn't willing to give that yet. So I think that there was a lot of fun in the will they or won't they leading up to it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I initially was going to have them kiss earlier, but then it's like, mm, no, it, it, we got to let her grow a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lindsay said, I love the just kiss already trope. It worked really well for your book. And actually, <laughs> I was actually going to ask you a, a kind of related question. Yeah. So in author spaces, I'm sure you see this a lot. And obviously, and also in like beta reader and, um, and arc reader spaces, you see a lot of people specifically asking for things that don't have a third act breakup. I'm sure you see that a lot. Yeah. You see that all the time. People are like, don't suggest me something with a third act breakup. Like, and I want to say yeah. whatever. Like everyone has an opinion, which is fine. Like whatever. Yeah. Uh, but how did you, how do you feel about that? I don't, cause like, I, I don't feel like Hayden and Hallie really had that, but there was a moment no. of separation where they, they, I wouldn't call it a third act breakup, but they did need a reconciliation of these hard feelings and stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like it's like a third act conflict versus yeah. a breakup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it initially did have one, um, oh, and it was never. It, I couldn't ever get it quite right, and so like I made improvements over the course of like the mentorship program I was in. I did a revision with my agent, yeah. and then when we brought it to my editor and she offered on it, she was like, "We want this. We love this book, but I don't think." I mean, you need to change that ending because they would not do that to each other. Right. And, um, and she was completely right. And at first I was like, kind of shocked. I was like, Oh my God, what, what? Like, how, how would I do that? But the more I thought about it, I was like, Oh, she's so right. Like, yeah. We, I think it would have felt really harsh. Like, yeah, I think we, it was. We might have had they had a breakup, and I can't speak for everyone, but I, I'm going to give a, a kind of like generalized opinion based on the conversations that we yeah. had. <laughs> I think if they had had one, I think we would have maybe turned on Hallie a little, not because yeah. it's not support women, but because she would have been the catalyst for it. Pretty clear. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. obvious that he wasn't going to be, and so we would have again, like Nyssa said, be like, protect our sweet baby angel. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, it would have been hard for her to come back from that. Yeah. Right. And, I think and your editor's right. Yeah. She's, she's brilliant. So I was like, oh my God, this book is so much better because we took that out and you know, it, it didn't create an unnecessary drama. I think that it also allowed the story to be about Hallie's growth and about mm -hmm. what she had to overcome. And cause in the end it is about her learning that she has to show up and that she has to be seen and yeah. not always easy, but you gotta yeah. do it. Um, I'm going to echo what Avery's saying here. She says, you did such a good job writing Kate. I hated him. We all, like, there were moments when I had to put it down because I was seething. Like, yeah. there were moments where I literally was like, like, my nails would, like, dig into my hands. And I was like, he's the worst. He's <laughs> so awful. But you know what the problem really is? He is that he's recognizable. Yes. He's it's that like it, the biggest problem. I'm it sure you on you because you know them. Yeah, you have run into him in your industry. I know you have. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like the people who are just so crappy 
but yet they don't ever see consequences and yet everyone still loves them and you're like why they suck <laughs> you're like what is happening here what do I you don't like about this person <laughs> yeah and and it's it, it's true i was so glad to see that she had the support of her I guess you would call it her direct boss, if you yeah. want to call it that. It's, it's hard to quantify the the order, the, like the chain of operations in there, in there, because you know whatever. That's not really that important. Actually. Yeah. But it was nice to see that she had she had that support there. Um, and uh, Naisa said, my favorite thing in a book is when the male main character takes care of the female main character when she's sick. So thank you for that. Yes, a lot uh, of people felt that way. Um, my favorite trope. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's, it's like hands down. Really healing, right? Yeah. You know? Like to let somebody see you that vulnerable and know that like they're not going to take advantage of you or they're not going to hold it against you. It was, it, I, I love that. That's probably my favorite scene in the book. Yeah, I think I'm, 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 that's my it. catnip, that trope. Like, hurt comfort just gets me. <laughs> okay, wait, speaking of, like, you just said that's your catnip. We have to know, yeah. like, who are your favorite authors and who are oh, you yeah. right now? Because we're always, like, we're, we're, we're stacked for the rest of the year. We've got yeah. books, but that doesn't mean that we're not always looking for new ones because sometimes when we fall in love with a book, like, okay, usually it's a chapter a day is what we usually yeah. say with your book, for example. Sometimes we did two or three because we got excited. <laughs> we would be like, should we just, just do a little, just want to do a little more, you know? And so we got through your yeah. class because we loved it so much. So we're always looking for new stuff when we fall into those right. situations. Yeah, um, probably one of my favorite romance authors is Alicia Thompson. I think she's just brilliant. Um, her first book was Love in, Th Love in the Time of Serial Killers, and then oh, she also has right, right, right. two oh. others. Um, With Love from Cold World is probably one of my favorite romance books of all time. Um, <laughs> the love interest in that book is literally like the hottest man ever to me. I, like, uh. I don't know why. Um, but he also has a UFO tattoo on his arm, much like Hayden. So I've like joked with her that like, <laughs> Very, so, like yeah, I was like, they're, they're UFO tattoo twins. Um, um, I love Jessica Joyce. She's a wonderful author. Um, Sarah Hawley is also fantastic. Um, Alexandria Belfler is great. Um, trying to think i'm since i'm in the middle of the of a move all my books are packed up sure, <laughs> i was no, like yeah, going yeah. to look behind me and then i'm like oh no they're all gone um i'm trying to think of who like my other auto buys are but like um, okay wait sort of related question yeah what is the author that got you into the genre Ooh. if you remember i would say like because i grew up in the YA dystopia yeah. sci-fi fantasy boom so I think that everything back then had like a romance arc to it so, so like, like for me thing. yeah exactly yeah. uh, I mean yeah Cassie yes. Clare was like a huge yes. like influence on me back yes. in the day um Same. and Same. I you know like I was shadow hunter trash um <laughs> like, I was gonna say that feels like your vibe like as soon yes. as you were saying a bunch of the stuff about when you were in high school I was like mm, I bet I know this oh um, yeah I don't know oh, if yeah. you remember the first time you read that book, but there's a moment, and I won't say any spoilers in case anyone in here hasn't read it, but anyone who has read Cassandra Clare's oh, first yeah. book, like, there's a moment that happens, <laughs> and I was reading the physical book, and I threw the, like, book no. across the room. <laughs> yeah. I was like, absolutely not. And I could not read for the rest yeah. of it. I was like, ma'am, begging your finest of pardons, I cannot read Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I read them later in high school, so, like, I, I think the first five were out and then like clockwork princess had just come yeah. out or yeah so like i was catching up so i did actually know like that how okay. that resolved thankfully um but i was like i was never like a huge jace clary fan like I, I like i like i like them and they're fun and stuff but i was like very like i liked alec i liked isabel and like i loved like um Magnus. So like for me, I was like really like gobbling them up for the side characters mostly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did know. So I was like, when I got to that part, I was like, okay, well, I'll just wait for this to fix itself. <laughs> I'm a little bit older than you were. So the first one came out when I was just yeah. in college. And so I was reading them as it was going. And it wasn't even that I was so into them. It was just that I was so utterly shocked by shocked. the moment because yes. I had never run into that in a book before. And I was like, what are you actually trying to say to me? Yeah. <laughs> <What is laughs> Seriously. Um, For sure. 
That's amazing. So we had some other suggestions. Um, Ali Rosen, Ashley Poston, and Kennedy Ryan are yeah. all great options as well. We actually, because it's October, we are committed to only reading cozy witch books in this month. That is our, yes. our <laughs> So we're reading a book called Hex Appeal. I don't know if you- Oh um, yeah. It is yep. so funny already. We're only three chapters in and we are obsessed with it. It's, I mean, it's okay. so sweet. Yeah, I'll have to- It draws you right in. Um, so that's, if, if you're, if you're um, you know, if you ever pop in and see anything, that's what we're-, we're Yeah, for sure. Chapter. Yeah, um, I'm really cur like I'm currently reading um Phantasma by Kaylee Smith. Um, oh, I think I saw that. It is so good. Mm -hmm. I like. I I have had to like stop myself from reading it because like I don't want to read it too fast because I'm just like oh, this is awesome. But it's like if you're looking for like something that is like more like romantic and spooky, yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, actually, a bunch of people in the comments are all saying either it's amazing or currently reading it. Also. Yeah, that's a, I guess that's common. Wait, sort of related to my last question. Yeah. What is a trope that you cannot stand? Oh, like, see, I think you'll almost auto be like, no, <laughs> I don't want it. I think that I am like, I think I can be convinced if the execution is done well enough for most things. Yeah, um, I feel the same way. Uh, I think that I am not huge on like alpha hole heroes. Um, that would probably, like, but I wouldn't say I can't stand it because I think like you definitely do come across those characters that fit the trope, but like they're written in a way where you're so compelled by them that like it doesn't bother me at all. Like I just I don't know. I I read romance for like a good you know. I read romance because I like seeing people find the people that they have to find so yeah. for me i tend to like more like I, I i don't know i don't know how to say it without like <laughs> being a dig but for me i just personally prefer more like cinnamon roll heroes so like that would probably be like the closest i have to a trope that doesn't really work for me i think it's just my style yeah and so back to your writing do you yeah. always plan to only write romance or do you have any books in your head that fall into any other genres yeah i mean i would love to branch out i would love to go into like horror fantasy Ooh. um i have Ooh. like a romance like a monster romance that i i'm yeah. just dying to find a way to make it work um oh. one day so yeah i definitely want to branch out i think that everything i write will probably have some semblance of a romance to it because i just like it's how i'm wired but I think that we could definitely see things that are not taking place in no. our world as we know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say also there's there's a difference between like a straight romance in in the traditional sense and also and yeah. like a, a story that has a romantic storyline in it as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so that that um, definitely uh, you know is a is a thing too. It, it's yeah, for sure. I wonder um, because you know, I, we read such a, a swath of things here. We don't, we don't only read romance if we will, we, you know, we'll read a book of essays or we'll read a, a biography or whatever, you know, which would yeah. be around a lot. Um, but I always wonder because we do tend to, like I said, stick with an author once we find them and we're always like, Oh, their development and how they like go. Yeah. Off. <laughs> I, I hope I, you know, I hope that I get to do that and branch out and, uh, write a lot of different things. I'm, I really like trying new things. So, I, I will never know if something does or doesn't work until I make myself try. <laughs> you. Um, kind of related. So I don't know. So because you are traditionally published, which is yeah. so cool, I don't know what your process for this is. But since everyone here does love your books so much, is there a place where when it does come time for you to look for ARC readers or anything like that, um, you would want people who are obviously already invested in your your style yeah. and your everything because this, this group would obviously be a great group of people yeah. that your side is there a place where you would want those people to go to look out for that or is that just something only the publisher handles and you're just like whatever goodbye yeah typically on that side the publisher handles it um it'll like every book will go up on net galley and um be available for requests i know that berkeley is a little bit notoriously stingy <laughs> um but i, I mean i would definitely anyway, so we don't need free yeah. books. it was more just like being we always yeah. feel like being an early reviewer for authors we love is such it's a like such a help yeah oh yeah 
Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, if there were to be those opportunities that come up in the future, I mean, I would say follow me on Instagram. Um, that is probably like where I keep the most up to date. That's where I post new happenings. It used to be Twitter, but Twitter kind of died a little bit. <laughs> Um, I mean, you know so why, yeah, though, right? I mean, yeah, I know. We know why. It, know why. It's like it's so sad. It was like where I made so perfect. many wonderful writer friends, and the community perfect. there was great. And no. now it's just sad. So yeah, I would say keep an eye out on Instagram. I you know I'm really so grateful to all of my readers and people who are supporting my books. So like yeah. I love to do whatever I can to repay the favor or you know help out however I can. But yeah, as of right I mean, now, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm still new at this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to echo what Lindsay said. You're an auto buy author for uh, oh, like all of us. You. So it's not about getting, I just want you to know it's yeah. not about getting a free book for us. Like I pre-ordered it right no away. Sure. Like, okay, we'll buy them. <laughs> We, there's actually a lot of us who, um, and, and Naisa will speak to this, like sometimes we'll have the Kindle version of a book just because it's easy, right? Whatever. Yeah. And then if we fall in love with an author, we're like, okay, well, I want a hardback copy for my <laughs> So like, we're not above buying books by any stretch. It's, it's a hundred percent more about like, how do we support this person in making sure that they continue to get the next thing made, right? Yeah, for sure. so addicted to the people we're addicted to. And that's that spice thing. Oh my gosh. Hey, another author friend of mine just joined. I don't know if you um if you know john john writes um like traditional really hardcore fantasy and sci-fi they're amazing oh, wow. amazing awesome books he has four in one series and the fifth is a completely new series it's coming out so he just popped in for a second he's so fantastic so if you haven't checked him out i um his, yeah. his name is john g doyle and he we've actually read his books in book club and he came and did a q a with us <laughs> um he's phenomenal and uh but a, a totally but you would it, it has that sci-fi bent as well so you might find oh, yeah. some, some kindred spirit there john if you don't oh, yeah. know about mallory mallory wrote the last book that we read for book club which is love and other conspiracies and it's kind of like a, a bigfoot hunting almost i mean that's a very that's watering <laughs> it down a ton obviously but if, if i was to give it one sentence it's love in the time of bigfoot hunting let's just call yeah. it that. yeah um so you know another another author connection for you there yeah um, for each other, but uh, and and John has uh, ever, much much like Hallie, ever changing colored. Ha well, Hallie's is <laughs> but, but John's hair yeah. is, is mine is usually John and I originally connected because I usually have colored hair, but I'm pregnant right now, so I'm not doing it. But yeah. um, he has pink hair right now, and he he changes it whenever whatever he feels like it, which is so awesome. Um, yeah, no, we definitely want to to be as supportive as possible. I'm actually going to ask yeah. for I can't see the time when we're on this, so I'm going to ask someone yeah. to get a time check because I know you have a hard out. Yeah. Yeah, nine twenty. It's nine twenty-five. Oh, okay, so you do have to bounce. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we are so grateful for you to take this time. Oh, thank this you. I will put this up on YouTube for anyone who wasn't available here today to be able to hear these questions and oh, sure. and get all that info from you. We're gonna pump up your account so that when your next book comes, <laughs> out, hopefully you'll come back to us again and by then. Yeah, we'll of course. We will, <laughs> we will get your follower account up before then so that you can. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'll try to I'll try to post more TikToks. Hey, listen, you already have I know I gotta do it. Show. It's it's marketing, and I'm just like it. Sometimes takes so much effort, but I I should do it. That's we what are, they, we are not that's what the marketing people advise. Yes, <laughs> and if you ever have any questions, we are a yeah. great like bounce off for that kind of thing because you know that's so feel free to always pop in and talk to us if you if you want to because uh we yeah everyone i don't know if you can see it but everyone is thank you and yeah. say oh have a great time at your meeting we are so excited <laughs> to do the time taking this time out of your day to talk to us we we cannot thank you enough thank you yeah, so much thank you guys for having me this was so much fun yes we'll see you again after the next one so around the yes. same time next year <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> All, All right. right. Bye, Bye, guys. <laughs> well, that's fun. Did you guys like that? That was a little bit different, right? Uh, let me see if I can change this back to uh, to where you can. We don't have the little. Let's see if this does. Is this the one that does it? Hey, it's me again. That was fun, right? I'm sorry that you guys didn't get to see her. You can see her face on her Instagram. Um, I like I said, I met her at the the book <sighs> festival, and she's adorable. So totally worth worth having her face on camera. It stinks that TikTok has that rule. I thought that because I was hosting it, that they would allow her to be visible. And it turns out I am very wrong about how the new like live system works. You're so welcome, Lindsay, and thank you for coming. I'm so glad that some of our, um, you know, book related friends were able to come and ask questions and talk too. Um, 
Like I said, we're going to try to get Kate Johnson, who is the author of the current book we're reading. I'm going to email her and see if we can do the same thing, because freaking why not? She's also awesome. Um, I think everyone probably agrees we have enough love in our heart for all the awesome authors, and we're just like, we'll take all of them. Wow. When it's so big on me, all of a sudden my hair looks even more messed up. Oh my gosh, don't worry, Sophie. I'm going to update. I'm going to like post it after, so don't even, don't even worry about it. Um, so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, just a couple of reminders. Oh, dentist appointment. Well, I'm going to upload it, Addy, so don't even worry. Don't even worry. A couple of reminders from my end. We do have Roll for Slime tomorrow and then again on Tuesday. So if you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and do that. Tomorrow's is here on TikTok and um, Tuesday's is after dark. So that is locked for age purposes, of course. Um, just frustrated with TikTok and Patreon being done with it. I know it's so stinky stuff, but just know we're always on at 830, right? Um, so uh, let's see, what else? Does anyone have any questions before I skadooch and get to work for the day. That was awesome, right? Super cool. What an awesome experience for us. So lucky that we get to do things like that for our group. Um, and hopefully there's many more to come, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of, a lot of good stuff. It sounds like next year we have another book to read. So that doesn't suck. That'll be year three for us. Yes. There will definitely be group role for slime. Every, every role for slime um, has at least one group in it. So you can either sign up for regular Roxy or you can sign up for after dark. Yeah, no problem at all, Lindsay. Happy uh, professional, professional. Social media. I was trying to be nice, you know, professional. The book I threw across the room is, is it City of Bones? It's Cassandra Clare's first book in, in her series. I can't remember if it's City of Bones or I think that's what it is. If you look up Cassandra Clare, it was her first book and it's C-L-A-R-E, not, not Clare like the girl's name. Um, I can't remember, but I, I, halfway through, there's a moment and I threw that book across the room. I was like, I don't know, like 22 or something like that. And I was, I, I remember the moment. I remember my room and what it looked like and how I just tossed that book. I was so upset. Oh my gosh. I had never tossed a book before and I was just mortified at what happened. I need a new fantasy series to pick up. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad one. Yeah. Cassandra Clare's books are pretty, pretty interesting. I know. Right. Yeah. Well, that's basically what he said to Becca. Um, so that was pretty cool. Did anyone have a favorite, uh, a favorite answer to one of her questions? I feel like I'm in HD right now and you can see every single pore. I don't know how that happened. Oh, you read those forever ago. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. A fantasy. I mean, have you read um, John's books? They're a little, they're like half sci-fi, half fantasy, but very cool. And it's a long enough series that it will keep you going for a little while. Because there's four of them, right? Um, that's something. And they're on Kindle Unlimited too, Jack. That's how I have them. I act, well, I actually have a physical copy as well because he's a friend and I wanted to support him, but they are, I read them on Kindle Unlimited and I just leave the other ones on the shelf. But whatever, he gets paid twice then, right? So who cares? Yeah, hearing your side of things was cool. I keep going blurry for you. Interesting. It was cool to hear the progression of how the book came to be. Yeah, I agreed. Um, John's John's name on when you're looking for author stuff is John G. Doyle, D-O-Y-L-E. And it is like a, it's a time travel um very cool like i don't even know how you would describe it it's time travel is is the basic situation that's happening in it um but very fun we we had a, we read them last year early last year um and uh really great stuff there as well oh there he is you can just click on his name right there yes he's 10 out of 10 like addy said great guy great author all around worth supporting and if you're looking for a new series that's a good one because like I said, there's four and there's some, they're, they're varying lengths, but they're like pretty good. Yeah. Great dialogue. He has very snappy dialogue for a character. So you don't feel like it drags the story at all. It moves everything forward very speedily, which we know we love here. I think the fact that she said she's a believer in certain theories made it real for me. You know what? I loved that. I didn't see that coming, but I like it. <laughs> you know, I'm into it. That was good. Um, so that's fun. And yeah, maybe John will come talk to us when his next book comes out. We can have him him uh, come back around again like he did last year. That was fun. And and we could do more things. If any of you are looking for another like um, thing, he also has a Patreon where he like posts early chapters and stuff like that too. Um, and, and I think the first level is only a buck. So, you know, you can get it on that pretty cheap. 
and see some some little blips and blabs of of what's coming with primordial pri if I can't speak, it's not because the words aren't there. It's because my brain only partially works. It's primordial spire is the word I was looking to say, but my lips did not want to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so very cool. I am going to scooch and get to work. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. There will be a lot of updates on Patreon over the next couple of days. So if you are looking for um, your grab bags or your whatevers and all those things, there's going to be a place to tell me if you do not have a pre-order so I can send those separately. Um, thank you so much. You too, Lindsay. We should chit chat about how to make um, the, oh, Lindsay, I wanted to tell you if you are looking for someone to throw in on that, like the 12 days or whatever thing, I would love to get in on that with you. If you're, if you're open to having um, someone pitch their, their book for, for the 12 days of Christmas thing that you're doing, because like I said, it takes place at Christmas. So why not? Um, and uh, let me know, just message me with all the high level details of what you need to make that happen. And we'll make it happen. Cause I can have sh stuff shipped right to you. Of course, you know that from last time um and uh what was i gonna say i was gonna say i think i might be on later to make grab bags because i i need the grab bags to be different i have like some stuff yeah perfect perfect we'll get that taken care of and i'll get the stuff to you early enough that you can do whatever you need with it um and uh that's pretty much the whole kit and caboodle so have a great rest of your day and uh if you are in the fantasy football league you're going down tonight bye guys <laughs>